Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick you can do with the hue saturation. We're going to be playing around with this color wheel. Basically this is a great tool for helping you figure out complementary colors and figuring out how colors work together in general. You can pick them up on Amazon. We can put a link down below. But uh, I would recommend picking one of these up. They have all kinds of really cool online color wheels but there's something about having it in your hand that I just really love. And they're cheap. So we're going to play around with colors today. Let's go ahead and get into it and uh, then we're going to talk about some complementary colors. So here is our image. This is by Sophie Mac. She was one of the winners of last week's contest and uh, I love, love, love this image. So cool with the long dress shot in the forest. I mean this does not look like it was a safe photo but uh, I'm sure you exercised all proper precautions and it looks really great. What we're going to be doing is playing around quite a bit with color and I'm going to show you something cool you can do with the hue saturation adjustment layer. So let's go to our adjustment layer. So here we go. We're going to go down to hue saturation. Now this is, I'll just give you like a brief run by here in case you haven't used it. Hue, basically you can just click this and drag it to the left or the right and it's going to change the hue of your entire photo. It's just going to give you some psychedelic effects if you go too far out. Saturation, just increase the saturation and the lower we go, eventually we're going to have black and white. And lightness is basically, this should be, in my opinion, called gamma because this is not exposure and it's not the same thing that curves does uh, either. So this is, I usually leave lightness alone. Let's just undo that because I usually leave that alone. Now, colorize is another function. This resets all your sliders and then you can change everything to a specific color. So if you want to say all the colors, I want to make sure are exactly this hue and exactly this saturation. You can make things lighter or darker here, but you're still going to have relative lights and darks based on your image. So that's another way you can use this slider. Let's go ahead and reset it. The last way is right here. You can actually choose, instead of editing the master file, you can edit e any one of these colors you pick. So let's just go ahead and go down to our greens and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be choosing a specific color range and I'm going to show you guys how to use this slider right down here. So this is the slider that controls where this actual color is going to be affected. Now it only is going to show up if you use, if you go ahead and go from master down and choose one of your colors. Doesn't matter which one you choose. So what I want to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just crank my saturation way up, like super, super high up. And the reason I do that is because it helps me to see what's actually being affected here. And I can see this area that I can see is now way saturated, that's what's going to get affected. So this little slider right down here is actually really powerful. You can choose to use it however you want. I'm going to click right here in the middle and just drag that to the left. And we can see as I do different parts of my image become affected differently. Like now it's affecting this color range. Now it's affecting the red color range. So what we have here is on the top, this is the color range that you're affecting. And on the bottom is what you're turning it into. Here on our sliders, we have our mid range, which just focuses a little bit more tightly on one specific color range. And then over to the side we have our, this is what you can see is like feathering. It's going to be like how much outside of that specific color range are you actually affecting. So if you want to bring this out a little bit, you can bring both the range you want to affect and your feathering out and it's going to give you a little bit more of a natural look and it's going to include more color in that. So if we wanted to do this red, we could do that. So as, I, as we can see, I can shift towards the, this side and it's going to affect the blue greens and it's going to increase the saturation of those. Now if you want to make this a little bit smaller, just click and drag the outsides in just like this and it'll get a little bit smaller, meaning it'll affect less color. So let's bring this from the left to the right and now we can still see the blue greens are being affected but it's not as much as if we were to increase this. So let's see what we can do with this. This will be a lot of fun. I'm going to bring this slider right to about there. Now up until now we've just been increasing saturation but that's half of the fun. The other half of the fun is playing with the hue. So let's go ahead and push our hue and see what we can do. This is probably something you've seen um, before in fashion or wherever where they take an entire forest and change the colors of it. And that is exactly what we're doing now. We're going to take these colors that are behind our subject and through manipulating where everything's actually going to be visible, we can then decide what is going to be affected in this color shift. And I can choose my hue very easily right here. So I can choose if I want it to be more on the purple side or blue side, whatever, whatever we want. I think we're going to go with the purples. It's just a little bit more like fairy tale and fantasy to me. I, I think it's really nice. Maybe just a little bit of red in there. There we go. Pushing it towards magenta, which is very nice. So we can see now that we have like a, what's known here as red violet, we're going to be 
pushing towards yellow green if I wanted complementary colors here. So keep in mind these sort of things. If you want your complementary colors, push towards this yellow green, and that's gonna work really well for you. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's really interesting there on the trees and the backdrop and everything like that. Let's make that visible and invisible. I don't want it so visible like here on the rocks and whatnot. So I'll just use my layer mask and I'm gonna paint black on my layer mask just over top of these rocks because it, it doesn't really make sense that it would be this visible over top of this sort of stuff down here. Sure, in the leaves, fine, fantasy land. Down here, the water, not so much. Okay, there we go. And that's just gonna look a little bit more natural. So just painting black on the layer mask it's going to help out with that. Okay, now what we're going to do is basically the same thing. We're just going to choose different parts of this image and push and pull them in ways that's going to make everything look really cool, uh, hopefully, or else I haven't done my job. All right, let's do it again. I'm going to grab another hue saturation adjustment layer. Again, we're going to go choose a color range here. Let's go ahead and squish this down just a little bit. And there we go. So it's going to affect less color. And now I'm going to crank up the saturation so we can see what we're affecting. I'm going to target this area, this like algae or moss or whatever is growing on the top of that rock, I'm going to target that a little bit better. So now we can see we're actually targeting that color range. There we go. And I'm just using the hue, sorry, I'm using my increased saturation here just as a little bit of a guide. Now what I can do is I can bring this color range towards every, any color range that I want. I can give it that like nice yellow green color range and that's going to play really well with the colors that we have in the background. So we can see this color is now going towards yellow green. All right, let's just look at the before and the after with that, giving it that nice yellow green. And you can do this over and over and over and over again if you want to do that. But basically what we're doing is we're playing with the yellow violet with the, sorry, the red violet with the yellow green. We can do this in the background too because we can see some other colors there as well. So let's go to, again, hue saturation. We'll just choose any color. There we go. And you can even use this eyedropper tool to select your color range that you want to edit. And then you can kind of push this anywhere you want to as well. So we can push it towards a little bit, have it blend in a little bit better with the background, or we can push it more towards yellow green. There we go. I think it kind of just works like blending into the background a little bit more, especially like this area that I was looking at there. All right. And I'm just going to turn this off and on to see where it works and where it doesn't. But here, I'm going to hit Command-I on the layer mask because I think it works on the right side of this, just right over here, decently well. Everywhere else, not so much. So I'm just going to make it visible there. That's a really cool thing about layer masks. You can just work on one part of the image at a time. And that's very, very cool. So already we can see, just with the hue saturation, we're doing quite a bit. Let's just do it again. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are. We're just going to keep playing around. Hue saturation, let's go over here. And I'm going to choose this color here. Let's just crank our saturation. So now we can see this is like that blue color that's kind of showing through the rest of the image. Okay, so if I don't want it to be blue, what can I do with this color? Well, I can just grab my hue saturation slider and I can shift it wherever I want to. I can shift it more to the yellow green. I can shift it more towards the magenta as well. And I can, if you're not sure what you're doing, just crank your saturation up. Sometimes it's hard to see. All right, so yellow green looks pretty good. Um, we'll bring our saturation up just a little bit and there we go. So we're kind of like removing that blue from the water and everything like that. All right. And turning this off and on, it's like, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I think we need to bring our lightness down just a little bit. Sorry. If you go back and try to edit it, this is stupid by the way. Um, sorry, it just is. If you go back and edit it, you have to then choose your blues too. Again, it, it doesn't remember that or your yellows or whatever you just edited. Um, it doesn't remember the thing that you just did, by the way. All right, apparently all these are showing up as zero. So, oh, it was the blues. So now I got to go back and find that it was the blues, not the blues too. It should just default to that. Anyway, we're going to lower the lightness on that. <laughs> it's not like I'm a program designer. I don't know how this stuff works. I'm just critiquing it with no idea how it works. That's basically what an asshole does, so I'm just going to shut up right now. <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and paint black right over here. And there we go. So we have a little bit more of that like nice color range coming into it, into the image, but it's not like ruining the effect. Let's turn some of these off and on. Like we've got some red here in our, in our water that I could just fade away just a little bit. And keep in mind, this is a tutorial and I'm not spending a ton of time on it.
All right, that looks really good. Just a bunch of hue saturation layers. Let's hit Command G to group them together. So here's the before and the after. Again, a cool effect showing you guys how to change the color of trees. And you can see it's not changing. It's keeping leaving me some green. So based on where you decide to put those, um, where you decide to put your little scroller there on the bottom, it's going to choose if you want the entire forest to change color or just part of it. And this get, again, it's just one cool option. Let's do one more thing here at the very end. I'm going to go to a levels adjustment layer and we're going to put a little bit of colorize, color in there. I'm going to go to my blue channel, pull some blues into the shadows and some yellows in the highlights. It's going to shift it more towards the green side. And then I think we're just going to pull a little bit of reds in there and a little bit of greens. All right, depending on, depending on where you want it. There we go. I love curves, just playing around with this stuff. All right, I think that looks really good. It's a very different look, but we still have all these nice colors and everything starts to play together very, very well, in my opinion. And there we go, so there's the before and the after with trees of an entirely new color and we're playing around with complementary colors. Thanks to our friend, Color Wheel. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Go out and change the color of anything you want, trees included. I'll learn you later. Have a good day. Have a good life. I send love to you. Everyone who's watching this, I love you. For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.